Richard Pennington here, Elite Stone Replicas. And uh, now I had a lot of people asking how to do blood work on a mask, something like a part four. So I figured I'd do a quick little video showing how I do it. There's a couple things you're going to need. Um, I kind of mix my own blood. And basically you want some clear Elmer's glue. And uh, you can get this at Walmart too. It's a clear gel tacky glue. Um, anything like that will work. This one's good because it's actually really thick. And so uh, I use this, I apply this first, kind of a lot uh, you know, outlining where I want the blood work to be. And uh, of course, you always got to make sure the blood glue isn't dry inside the inside the little container here. So. Uh, the mixture of the blood that I have in the clear Elmer's glue is uh, it's basically a mix of uh, the clear glue, actual fake blood that you can get in any of the Halloween stores or anything like that. Uh, it's got some spray paint in it, which kind of thickens it up. Helps with the, the curing process of the blood. And um, he also used a little bit of, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm still pretty sick, so my throat's kind of killing me, but I wanted to do this video. But uh, it's a couple different colors of red, spray paints mixed in with it, uh, some food coloring, some green, a couple drops of green, of blue, and... Uh, a hint of brown. I don't want it to be too dark at the beginning and it's still a little watery. But what you're gonna also gonna need is some some detailing brush, something like that. Doesn't have to be anything special. And a little bit thicker one here. Uh, you can also get these kind of q tips from uh, Hobby Lobby. These help a lot uh, when you're outlining where you want the blood to be. But uh, for the most part, I use a, the brush. Right now, I'm using a part four mask that I had done that uh, I really liked to. Uh, I liked the blood work that I did on this one. And so I'm going to use that as my reference because it's uh, pretty uh, accurate to what the, what the movie looked like. Uh, Davey Armstrong, this is your part four, by the way. So we're going to be doing the blood work on that. But start with the real kind of that tacky glue gel and start applying that to outline a general idea of where you want the blood to be. And you can apply this really thick. Actually, I like applying it really thick because as it dries, you can tap on it and give it some texture so it won't look like it's just flat paint. Which as a lot of, a lot of hockey mask artists tend to do, is just throw paint on it and expect it to look like blood. So just kind of like I said, just apply it heavily in areas that you want the blood. Certain, you know, the outer edges of the blood, you don't want it to be real thick and gross because you want it to kind of spread naturally. But uh, the inner, right here by the actual axe cut itself, you want it to be pretty thick. And I do the outline, then I go back in and start filling in the area. You can kind of see how that's working. And don't worry about the edges. You're going to be taking care of the edges soon, so they won't be so uh, defined and stuff. And I also do the outer outlines, kind of where the drips are going to go. It kind of gives me a really good idea of how I want the blood to work. 
Another thing you want to make sure you do when you're doing blood work is get the inside of the axe mark and the vent hole. I've seen a lot of hockey mask artists leave that like white or the actual color. They just do the outer edge of the uh, axe mark and it looks really bad. And it's like, okay, well, where did all that blood come from? If it's going to be white on the inside, where did the blood come from? So uh, you definitely want to get the inside of the axe mark as well. Now, the good thing about this tacky glue is it tends to dry and thicken up even more. So, I don't know if you can really tell, but as you tap it with the brush, it gets a texture to it. Which you're going to want to kind of do as you go, because it really, really gives the blood a really good texture. And drying up and everything like that, it just it works really, really well. So, I think that's good. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Make sure you rinse your brush really good. You don't want that blood to, blood to dry there. So then what I do is while that this is still dry or still tacky, is just take that mixture and just start going over all those spots. It doesn't have to be exact. You're not looking for perfection just yet. And it is going to be bright red. Don't worry about that just yet. You just want to get the blood outline of where you're going to want this. And you can be a little heavy with it. Just be careful because it will start dripping and you'll get an, you know, an une unexpected look to it that you may not like. And you can kind of see how the blood is starting to look. It starts spreading a little bit, which is really good. Uh, inside this, this tacky glue, it starts to spread. Kind of wipe it inside the blood like that. Then you can kind of see how that's taking shape. And remember, get the inside, or else it's going to look fake. One thing about blood, of course, everybody's going to know, is that it, as it dries, it gets darker. So you start with a really good base of this red and apply as much as you want of the red with your thicker brush. So we kind of got a good base going there. Rinse your brush. Sorry you're going to hear my African gray parrot in the background making all kinds of noise. Uh, sorry about that. <coughs> now go back to your other detailing brush dry it off a little bit since it's still got water on it. Okay. Okay, now you're going to just take a little bit of black. I like black because it darkens it up really well. You can use brown if you want. But in that same mixture that you just added, that you were just using to make the red, add that black to it. You mix it up really good. It's going to get really dark. It's going to all look pretty much black, but don't worry about that. Because you're going to add a little bit more red to it. So take your red again. Don't mix it in with the black just yet. Just put it to the side. And what you're going to do is you're going to dip the black into the red. And just start going over it. It's going to look dark, don't worry about it, because you're going to just spread it out. And it'll start blending in very well. If it looks too dark, just go back and get a little bit more of the red. You can kind of see how that's taking shape. It's got that real nice texture to it. Take the you know, edges of your brush and kind of spread it around inside. You want that kind of... Yeah, that kind of look to it, you know, like it's it's been dripping and nasty, all that stuff. You 
You can mix a little bit of that red in with the black if you want. What I do is I tend to dab the brush into that glue and it gets that really nice texture to it. Kind of spreads it out even more. Again, don't worry about it being perfect just yet. You're going to do some detailing work. So you can see it's coming out really nice. It's uh, looking bloody, which is what we want. Really rinse your brush off again. Also, you're going to want some just some regular water. Take your detailing brush, dip it in the water, and what you're going to do is start going over some of these edges and remove the hard edge. The blood itself isn't going to have that hard edge on it. So you start kind of just messing around with it. Another good thing is with that fine edge of the brush, start spreading it a little bit in through here. Just kind of work it around. You can dab it some in there and just kind of start moving some of this around if you have to get some more of the red on that on your fine brush. Come in here and start adding a little bit more drip. Kind of like that. Really kind of gives it that really good texture and like it's been runny. And just start adding little fine details to it. Kind of like that. see how that blood is really starting to look good and then go back in again and dab it basically what this is also going to help keep it from doing is running you don't want it to run because like I said you'll start getting some really bad drips and you know they're kind of a pain I mean you, you just use water and take them off but it's better just to do it this way because it helps it dry as well as you know you'll get these bubbles try to pop the bubbles you don't want bubbles Excuse me. I'm going to add a little bit more dark up here. See how that blood works looking? Looking really good. to it. The biggest thing about blood work is making it look like it's blood, not paint. Too many hockey mask artists just throw paint, red paint, and bam, oh, I've got blood. You don't want that. back in and start adding a little bit more heavy blood towards the inside. This is the blood you get and it looks really, really good. Just spread it out a little bit more. Kind of give it a little like that. Rinse your brush. Make sure it's clean. You can dry it off a little bit. I'm going to let that set and we will be back. All right, so we're back. So there's one thing about the part four mask is there's some, especially the shower scenes because it's getting wet, there's a little bit of drip coming down the eye and it's kind of faded out with bl wet blood coming down over here and you have some other spots. The best way to do that is dip your brush in water 
go back to your little mixture of blood, dip it back in the water, get it real watery, and just kind of follow it down like that. You want it watery. It'll run, yes, that's fine. Let it come down, make a drip or two like that. Then just take a rag, a dry rag, and dab it. You want to leave a little bit of the color. See, you can still see some of the color there. You want that. And what you want to do is also get a little bit more red in the water and kind of start bringing that little trail down a little bit. That way you can kind of see it. You don't want it too heavy because you're going to dab it. So then you're going to dab it again. Just remove the wet look to it. You can kind of see how up here it's spreading a little bit, so you want to can take that off. <coughs> you can come back in here like I like to do, and just add a little bit more color to the drip. Make sure that drip's in the wrong spot there. Let's take that back out a little bit. Come back out a little bit and bring the drip down about right there. Now you don't want it to look like it's been brushed on, so add a little bit to it, and then you're going to dab it, because you don't want the whole drip to be there. Let's take your real fine brush and add a little bit of drip. kind of go something like that and now there's other other spots where you do have a drip as well just little spots up towards the head so you want to just get your fine brush and go up above the vent hole you know, kind of paint that on and just do a couple little drips here and there and then again take your rag and kind of take the tail off of that Take a, take a little while, or at least a couple times for you to kind of get it, but it really just wipes right off. Just, that's where some of these come in, these things come into play. Just dip that in the water, and you can really just wipe away a lot of this stuff that you don't want. Let's see. Okay, so also there's a lot of, of that kind of watery blood over here on the sides coming down over here by the vent hole. So I just kind of add a little bit of the blood mix right here by the vent hole. And again, blood on the brush, dip it in the water, and what I do is I'll start just kind of dabbing even up and through here because it's, it kind of runs from up in here. You have to add a little bit more regular blood because it's, this is actually a little too dark. You can just dab this off. Use a little bit more of the red blood. Dip that in the brush. This is be sporadic with this stuff because you're going to dab it. Take your rag and dab that off. If you put too much, use some water, it comes right off. Let's get a little bit of water. You can kind of see. Get it real watery and pink, and it actually looks like you know the, the blood's been dripping. Bring a little bit more down. Make it a little heavier up here towards the top. And just dab it off. A little too much here. So you can kind of see it. You want to have 
you know, kind of uneven splotches, you can add more. Just use your finger, start wiping it. Put a little bit more here. Dab that. Just got some of that blood. A little bit more, kind of a runny look to it, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. So now when you're going to start doing some of the detailing, we're almost done. So that looks pretty good. Come down here. Add a little bit more down here. Make it a little heavier. Just remember this needs to be done pretty much after you've done all your weathering and everything like that. You don't want to be doing blood work and then weathering. Now you can go back in here, do a little bit of water so it doesn't really eat into it too much. Start dabbing into the blood up here. Don't worry, it'll start doing some weird stuff. That'll, that's okay, because you're going to be adding just a little bit more of your, your red and black mixture. This is just to give it some texture. It's starting to add some of those blood details of dried blood and stuff like that. here towards the center. This is really what you want. Look at that. That's awesome blood work right there. Go over some of these little edges. A little bit more. Drip look, which is really what you need. You don't want it perfect because blood is never perfect. And blood is never uniform, it's always going to be a little extra spots and it just kind of runs, so you don't want it to be perfectly uniform. Pretty much that's how it works. I take this back in the water and just start cleaning up some of these edges, making them look a little bit rough. It's like that's a hard edge there, we don't want that. Cool thing about that glue as well is it peels up with water. So you can get some really kind of cool effects. with dried blood, if you just start peeling up the dried edges here and there. Don't worry, you can always go back over it. See, look at that. That's awesome. You need to add a little more, just use this and just kind of go back over it, give it a really kind of cool look. So yeah. That's pretty much how I do the blood work on a part four.
as it dries it'll thicken up and still just use your brush and uh, kind of tap it so there's the blood work if you want to do any more cleanup work like I said water you can come in here and lighten it up in areas remove some of these drips so it doesn't look so heavy you know that kind of stuff give it a little bit more sporadic look to it but like I said yeah I was... <coughs> excuse me just use your brush as it dries you can kind of see this here just dab it here and there and it'll fill in like that give it a good texture as it dries you don't want it to be perfectly flat because blood does not dry that way so like that if you have to add more you can give it more of that look remember pop any bubbles that you see there but you want it dried kind of gross nasty scabby look not paint you don't want that paint look you don't want the drip to look like oh well look I just put paint on it and there we go See, and it gets really kind of cool because you get dark towards the middle, and as it goes out, it gets lighter. Really awesome look. Look at that. This is what you want. And that's exactly what you want right there. So, so everybody, thank you for viewing. Still going to do a little bit more detailing work on this mask, just for my own personal preference but uh, yeah that's how you do blood work on a part four remember what I said details get inside the axe mark not just on the outside you want to get inside so you know you know you've got real blood in there don't make it look like paint you don't want to just okay I've got red paint and put it there it's gonna look fake you don't want it to look fake so there you go it's uh, Richard Pennington, Elite Stone Replicas. Thanks for bearing with me with my sickness. And, uh, yeah, I'll have more videos up 